team okay? You don't know, yeah. Sorry, I'm a couple minutes late. Thanks everyone for your patience, I appreciate it. Um, today we're here to talk about Fedora Badges 2.0 and uh, I don't know who's here in the crowd so I will do a short introduction. I am Marie Norton and I have been working on Fedora Badges for over 10 years now, um, last month. So that's pretty cool. Uh, also involved in some other teams in Fedora and a previous Fedora Community Action and Impact Coordinator and currently working for the Python Software Foundation as a Community Communications Manager. So I'm going to pass it to Emma to introduce herself. Thanks, Marie. Um, yes, my name is Emma Kidney. I'm on the Fedora design team as well as the community design team that's within Red Hat. Um, and I've been part of that since 2021. So I'll pass it over to Akash. Thanks, Emma. Um, I've been contributing to Fedora community for a while now. Name's Akash Deepthel. And Right now, I contribute to both Fedora infrastructure as well as I'm a part of a Red Hat team called the Community Platform Engineering Team. All right, so over to you again, Murray. Cool, so I'm just gonna do a little introduction here about what we're sharing today and what Fedora Badges 2.0 is all about. So as I mentioned, I've been working on Fedora Badges for over 10 years, so it's, that old plus some um and it's it's showing its age if you've been on badges.fedorproject.org you know it's showing its age a little bit and if you've interacted with the system you know that some of the badges don't work as well as they used to um because different pieces of the infrastructure behind how badges work have changed both on the fedora side and the you know, how some of badges was built, some of that technology has changed too. So a little bit over a year ago, we had some folks from CPE and community members say, you know, like we want to revive this. What do we need to do to make that happen? Um, so one of the first things we did was like gather some rah-rah support about it and gather some testimonials about why we love badges as a community why it's important to us, what kind of impact it's had on our lives and our lives in, in Fedora. And you can actually find that discussion thread on discuss, um, discussion.fpo and it's got some really nice stories. So definitely check that out. So once we're like, okay, we want to do this, we got a group of people together uh, to kind of plan and talk about what we needed to do. So we realized we needed to three things, which would be a new back end, very importantly, a new front end, because when the front end is looking outdated and Fedora's aesthetic has grown and how we look at websites and interact with them has also grown and also new art. There's tons of beautiful art there, but some of it was made over 10 years ago. So, you know, we the badges aesthetic has grown. And we wanted to bring that kind of up to speed. Um, so currently we're meeting once a month on a call and we have two element chats. So I am going to plug right now uh, a request for more volunteers and people to join in because we really do need this to be a community effort um, to get it back up and running. And part of what we're doing to make that happen is modernizing the whole system so that it's more interesting for people to work on you know, everything from the back end, the front end, and the art. So you can join us on a monthly call. And we have two channels that you can, you know, come and introduce yourself and get involved. So we have our usual badges channel that's been around for ages. We also have a badges development channel so that we can keep that conversation focused and you know, folks can go back and forth about the development as much as needed without kind of clogging up that main channel where all of us are working. So that's a little bit about who, what, when, where, and why we're doing this revamp. 
And I think I'm going to pass it now to Akash to get into the back end. Thanks, Marie. Right, let's move on to the next slide. So, um, Tari was the front end as well as the back end the entire application structure for the Fedora badges. It was basically a web application, or well, still is because it's still used in the community that interacted both with the database as well as it rendered the front end. Now, the problem with Tari was that, you know, it was a website and we wanted it to act like a web application. And in 2023, I just looked it up real quick, 95.8% people use their websites, web applications from their mobile phones. So it was time that we optimize our things to be a lot more mobile first responsive. So, um, you know, with time over the course of multiple years, what we investigated and found out that, you know, APIs are the way forward to talk with services, you know, instead of sending SDP requests which are a part of a website and let that website refresh every single time you do anything of that kind. It's better to use something like an API and that way your website will be like a web application. The interactivity would increase. So that is the simplified access part. The next is the faster backend. And with time, we have gotten a lot many technologies, a lot many things that are much better capable of using the system resources that they're provided with. On Ralph mentioned of one of those frameworks, fast API, which is capable of running asynchronous code, thereby responding to multiples, like millions of thousands of requests and the same resources that any other synchronous frameworks would be capable of. So a faster backend has become a need of the hour. Then of course, the better interaction, like I said before, we need something to be like an application while not working as hard to make one application and then port it to some other thing. Well, why not some, make something that's uh, based on web technology so that we can create it once and use it everywhere else. Granted, there are problems with that, lots of it, but we can definitely onboard as many people as we want to irrespective of the platform that they're making use of with using web technologies. And finally, with the use of efficient databases, instead of running, well, let's call queries by that, you know, just like that we use things like abstraction, like SQL Alchemy, and there are the libraries that let you write Pythonic code while you're interacting with things like a database. So that definitely helps to reduce that uh, curve of learning and gets people started really quickly with contributing. The next slide, please. Sorry, one sec. Uh, all good, all good. We just got a glimpse of one of your next talks, so that's a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. A quick plug for that, though. So attendees, if you watch that, you should definitely turn up in like an hour from now when Emma's talk is there. I think it's an hour 30 from now. So be sure to uh, be there. It's one of the good ones. Right. Yeah, so um, now that we know about the state of the badges technology stack right now, we know it for the fact that a revamping is required and we would love to use something that's already there and try to fix things up, but um, we can't quite. And uh, here are the reasons, here are the change requirements from the service that would not let us do just that. So um, we're trying to make an open ecosystem so as to make sure that we have both an API as well as a front end. The front end, again, being a reference front end that people can make use of, but if they want to, well, write client application in frameworks like Qt or GTK that accesses our API, that's perfectly fine. They totally can do that. So we really want to keep an open ecosystem so as to make sure that people can contribute, not in the way they want, but also in the tools that they want to create with these things. And also the boosted efficiency with the use of asynchronous frameworks with uh, you know abstraction layers so as to make sure that the 
programmers are spending more time writing solutions and not well creating wheels for the car that they want to drive then the third thing is of course making our websites look more akin to applications and like one of the folks in the comment section mentioned making things mobile first but not forgetting desktop users at the same time so definitely that and finally wrapping every single thing that i just mentioned in an inclusive process that is welcoming to everyone irrespective of how experienced you are in python or in javascript or in frameworks and the front end side of things we don't care we'll have the documentation that's uh going to get you started with contributing in no time and there's definitely something uh for everyone next slide please right so uh, the reason why we don't want to revitalize what's already there so of course it makes use of an aging technology called pyramid for which the documentation is there but the community is not so we really want to use something like fast api that's a lot more current something that people can contribute to and also mention off in their resume. So it's a win-win situation for every single one. Then of course, the prolonged inactivity of the code base, which led to a lot of uh, test cases failing, the CI workflow stopping to work. And at this point in time, it's better off to start with something new rather than trying to learn an old code base that might not be worth it. And then the experience required now if you were someone who wrote it back then it would feel like a natural thing to you but for everyone else who is learning it into 2023 a technology that was relevant 10 years back might not only be heightening up the barrier of entry but it also won't be worth contributing to and finally scarce documentation with repositories spread in Pagure and on github and some on gitlab as well at the time of speaking this it's very difficult for a beginner to get started contributing. So definitely no revitalizing and more revamping. The next slide, please. And yeah, I'm going to get quickly over with this uh, because there's a bunch of other stuff we talked about in the design side of things as well as the front end side of things as well. But this is how the skeleton looks like. Take a screenshot. But if you don't want to take a screenshot, the next slide uh, would send you the information about the documentation. So the next slide, please, Emma. So this is the documentation where you can find all about the investigations run by uh, the Fedora infrastructure as well as the community platform engineering team about this project. Uh, take a look at that. And here's the project repository. We accept issues, pull requests, any contributions for that matter. And with that, I'm going to pass it over to Marie. Over to me, I think. Oh, yeah. Over <laughs> to Emma. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. No, you're fine. Yeah, so I'll just quickly go over the UI UX side of things. So I guess um, the main question is why revamp? Like Marie said at the start, the current look is a bit outdated and it does use old branding. Um, as you can see up the top here, you can see it's the old Fedora logo, the old Fedora font, the old Fedora blue. Um, the accessibility to information is a bit limited. Um, and it would also just be nice to align it with other Fedora branded websites and applications like Fedora Docs, Fedora Discussions, um, and the newly revamped Fedora website as well. Um, community feedback. So last month I would have sent out a Fedora Badges front end questionnaire on Fedora Discussions. I would have liked to have a nice little infographic here displaying the information that was that came from that questionnaire, but unfortunately. I did not get the time to do that this week. So, um, but I will say there was a satisfactory amount of participation on that questionnaire. And what I can do is as soon as I have that ready, I'm going to share it up on Fedora discussions because there is um, some valuable feedback there and some nice insights to things. Um, the user flow. So this is a visual representation of how the user moves through a website. So this is based on the current uh, Fedora badges application at the moment. And um, this is to just kind of help you see all the different paths to kind of get to all the different pages. You can see up the key here, you know, the box is the page, the link then as well, and an action. So in our case, it's mainly login. And um, the admin pages are kind of in this white gray color. 
Um, not everyone has access to these. Obviously, it's just people with um, admin, ad, admin rights, um, but they do have quite a lot of more pages to see. Um, the low fi wireframes. So low fi, low fidelity, and um, they're just basic wireframes that outline blueprints for web pages. So this is just to give everyone kind of a general look and feel of what the Fedora badges could look like. Um, yeah, there's going to be no major changes to the architecture, um, from my side anyway. Um, what I would have liked from this was to gather kind of community feedback regarding the current direction. I know obviously these are very kind of rough at the minute. They're not that refined. Um, but it's to just kind of give you that general kind of gist of where it could go. And what I can do is I can just paste in the discussion post here. Um, if people want to give any feedback, they can. And then onto the hi-fi wireframes. So high fidelity um, are just a bit more complete in their visual representation. So a bit more refined and um, kind of closer to what the mockups will actually look like. They're still in the early stages. And what I can do is um, once the mockups are complete, I can post them on discussions and um, for feedback and I can work with the community until we are satisfied with the outcome. And um, this was kind of a similar approach I took with the Fedora website revamp. If anyone remembers um, or was on Fedora discussions, then you would have seen I, um, every time I was done with a particular page, I would have posted it up on discussions with my justification for, you know, why things looked the way they did. And then the community could give me feedback on what they liked or didn't like or what they think I should change and so on. So it is it is an involved process with the community, I think, as well. Um, next steps. So as I said, the mockups will be posted as they are done. Um, and I will work with the community until mostly happy with the new look. Obviously, we cannot please everyone, but I will try um, to get as close as I can. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Um, that being said, this will take some time. I'm the only one working on the UI UX at the moment. Um, so it will take some time for me to post them. Hopefully I'll have something before Christmas. Um, and if you want to get involved, feel free to just reach out to me and we can get you started. Um, so yeah, I'm pass it over to Marie then for the graphic design side of things. Yeah, I think that's a pretty exciting part to contribute or get volunteers for as well. Um, putting a new fresh paint um, coat of paint on Fedora badges would be really nice for someone's um, portfolio. So I'm going to talk about the graphic design, the badge art part of the revamp. So you can go to the next slide. So, you know, why update the art, right? I talked a little bit about it at the beginning, but basically graphic design standards have uh, changed over the years since we first kicked off badges. Fedora's brand has changed and evolved. Um, and the people contributing to the project have also changed. Um, I'm still here, but there's lots of newcomers who want to do new things, try new things. Um, so these are all reasons to update the art. We've also learned things like about what we want the standard to be. Um, we've also learned that, you know, really diving into that old template. If you're a vector artist, you might be a little bit sad about some of the choices that were made in there. So we've made that now very clean and fresh. Um, and like I said, the badge aesthetic has grown over the years. We can go to the next slide. So last summer, I mentored an outreach intern, Nikita. Uh, hopefully, maybe you've met her at last year's flock. Um, and she worked on Fedora badges. So she took our template and modernized it. So on the right, you can see the new version of what our Fedora badges template looks like. So it's more focused on the graphic. It's simpler. It's also compatible with dark mode. Um, and it's nice and visually balanced. We can go to the next slide. Um, 
she also started, Nikita also started a new style guide to kind of go with this updated template and all of the learnings that we have made over the last 10 years. So this is an example page. You can go to the next slide. And this summer I mentored two interns. Oh, I also co-mentored with Samira Goel, um, uh, Chris and Roland, who did an amazing job. All the interns do an amazing job, but uh, they did so much work on bringing the old artwork into the new templates that Nikita uh, created last summer. So here's an example of a variety of the badges. You're probably familiar with them and how they look now in the new template. So we won't be implementing these in the old website because it would kind of, uh, we've made some changes to the padding around them and it would kind of overtake the space on the current website. Um, so we're waiting to implement these until we get the new website up. Um, but as you can see, they're modern and they're gorgeous and I love them. Let's go to the next. So just going to talk very quickly about what's left to do. I'd love to have a chance to get to some of the Q&A. So excuse me if I rush through some of this. So Chris and Roland got through about half of the badges. We have around 600 badges, actually probably a little bit more now. So they got through 300 badges in three months, which is monumental, but there's still about 300 to do. So we need badge artists as well uh, to get through this, but we're talking about putting together some uh, design sprints to kind of really make it happen. Um, we have some new things to put into the style guide that Nikita started last summer because Chris and Roland learned things while implementing into the new style guide. Um, and there's some small design improvements. So myself and Samira are working through the changes there and we, sh we hope to have it done in the next month or two. Next slide, please. Uh, once the style guide is finished and the badge art is complete and implemented, we will then update all of the documentation. Updating it right now doesn't make sense because we're still using the old system and all of the documentation we have up is still valid for that old system. Um, and then implementation will work in sync with the other folks on the team to make sure that you know the specifications and how we put those templates together will work with uh, the new website. Next slide. And that's it. So we have three minutes for questions. Hopefully we can maybe go like two minutes over um, just so we can get through some of these. Uh, I see that we do have some replies in here, but just for the video's sake, I think we could quickly respond to them. So the first one is, would the 2.0 system have badge series? For example, sequentially ordered series of badge earned in an order. Do you wanna take that, Akash? Yep, so uh, in short, yes, we will. We call them collections over here and not series because um, well, some badges are not in series. So let's just say if you voted for Kado the next 35 and then you were busy, so you could not vote for the coming two uh, times and then you come back for Kado the next 38, then uh, these can be in a collection while series can be like long life to Pegyo. If you're making multiple uh, comments to Pegyo, it's quite likely that you would be able to reach the 100th mark only if you have made the 15th comment. So that would be a series, but the other thing will be a set. So we just call them collections in the newer system. Over to you, Marie. Cool. All right, next question. Would historical data, i.e. people's existing badges, and who has earned them be preserved? Yes, they will be. And we're trying to, you know, reuse the older uh, data set and kind of transform it to a newer data form where a bunch of things which were specifically for open badges won't be required anymore. So of course we'll have them, we'll be trying to make these uh, databases a lot more optimal so as to make sure that we keep stuff that's necessary and nothing more. Over. Awesome, I think the last one might be for you too. So just stay with me. Uh, is there work going into the back end side to eclipse or solve the currently broken badges? Right, so uh, a bunch of badges are broken right now, which have has a lot to do with the Fed message compatibility layer that we make use of right now. 
uh, that this is one of the last uh, applications that makes use of Fed, uh, Fed message. We are using Fedora messaging in most of the tools. Like at, at this point, almost all the tools, but uh, we need to fix badges first in order to be able to make it use Fedora messaging. And while we are not using it right now, or while we are not working on it right now, but we definitely plan to do that with the consumer project. And I have sent a link over there. If you take a look at that, it's definitely in the pipeline. It's just not something that we're working on right now. Thank you, Akash. So I don't see any more questions in the Q&A. So I'm going to take this last like 30 seconds to say, please come join us. Please keep this beautiful wonderful nostalgic and hopefully now modern to um, project alive for fedora like we do don't want to lose this every day that goes by the old system breaks down a little bit more we get more tickets opened with people saying i didn't get this badge or i didn't get that badge and we want that for people and if we can make this happen we'd love to do even more with it We'd love to like get badges for some of the areas of Fedora that don't have them yet. Um, we'd love to be able to, you know, rework some of the how how the events badges work versus community. And there's lots of things that we could do, but we really need folks to pitch in. And I know people are always asking for contributions, but this is a really uh, it's at the heart of Fedora and we need folks to join in uh, to make it happen. So thanks for listening. Thanks for being here. We really appreciate you and we hope that you enjoyed our presentation. Bye folks. Bye everyone. <laughs>